A mighty a-hole for calling the cops on my cousin after she locked herself in my baby's room and wouldn't come out? I, 24, had my son two months ago. I live at home with only my mother, and I'm pretty protective of him since he came out premature and his father walked out. Now for the context. I have an almost 16-year-old cousin who will call Laura. We both grew up together and were very close. I spent a lot of time with Laura, and as she got older, it got easier to hang out with her by the time I became an adult. As for Laura, she really likes my son. She's always asking if she can see him and hold him, and I always had to refuse in the beginning due to how weak and at risk for things he used to be. She would sometimes get an attitude or look at me weird, but never did anything else and listened. Now that he's older, I've let her come by sometimes to see him. Earlier this week, my mom was out of the house and Laura was sent over so that she could deliver some stuff for me. I had spent about 45 minutes trying to get him to go to sleep, and when Laura got there, it had taken me another 10 minutes before he did. Laura had asked if she could hold him while he slept, and I told her no before putting him in his crib and leaving. I had decided to start making food in that time, and Laura went somewhere else in the house. I didn't really care since she's family. About 15 minutes later, I heard my son crying, and when I went to go check on him, I found the door locked, and I could hear Laura inside trying to calm my son down. I told her to open the door, but she refused and told me she had it handled. I started trying to force the door open, but failed. I started panicking and slamming on the door, and at that time, Laura somehow had forced the dresser in my son's room onto the door. At this point, I was nearly having a panic attack, and Laura was yelling she could help my son, even though he was screaming and crying as well. I called my mom begging her for help. She had told me she would call Laura's mom and that I should call the cops. I did as she told and told them of my situation, and they came soon after. They came in, told Laura to open the door, and when she refused again, even with my son screaming, they took the door off its hinges and went inside and fought with Laura for my son. My mind muddles a bit here because of how much of a mess I was, but they eventually grabbed my son from her arms after they found her in the corner of the room on the floor with him. Laura's parents and the police took Laura some place else, and I took my son to the hospital to see if he was fine. Now my mom's side of the family is telling me I should consider pressing charges on Laura, while Laura's family is livid with me for calling the police on her and that calling her mother was enough. I'm really torn between it. On one hand, I'm upset with her that she did that to me and my son. But on the other hand, I feel bad for calling the police on her. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. You should press charges. What she did was terrible. But also, this girl clearly needs help. Therapy. Lots of it. It's odd, because before all this, Laura genuinely seemed okay. She always had a soft spot for babies like I do, but she never once growing up displayed this sort of behavior. Or at least in front of me. Something like this can happen fast. All it needs is one trigger. For me, it was one word in a therapy session, and boom, the psychotic episode blew up on me. I was medicated. I was in therapy. It happened anyway. Wow. I didn't even really know something like that was really possible. I'm sorry something like that happened to you. And thank you for educating me on this. I'll be sure to take that into consideration if I end up going through with everything. Not day hall. And if I were you, I'd consider getting a restraining order. I actually never even considered that until I read your comment. And I may just do that now. Thank you for the suggestion. Do it, OP. Do it now. Get a restraining order, press charges, and do not drop them. She needs to learn that what she did was unacceptable and very responsible. Also, keep her away from your child. Laura has an unhealthy obsession with your son, and I fear she might try to kidnap him. Not day hall. She's 16, not 4. She should know better. Honestly, a restraining order might not be a bad idea. It's a pretty unhealthy obsession with your baby if Laura was willing to fight law enforcement over it. Also, that girl needs some psychological help. What on earth would possess someone to do something so dangerous and stupid? That's what I want to know as well. Growing up, she was never really like this. She's always loved babies and small children. And yes, very little she fought to have the baby in her arms, but she didn't ever force her way like this. It almost feels like it was out of nowhere. Now for the next story. 
Am I the a-hole for not telling my former best friend that I'm married? Some background. Me 25 female and my former best friend Eve 25 female were friends for six years. We met in high school and then went to college together and we were very close for that time. Around three years ago, we had a huge falling out. The details aren't important. But the falling out wasn't over anything petty. She deeply hurt my feelings, had been doing so for a while, and when I explained to her why I was hurt, Eve wasn't remorseful at all. And to this day, I've never gotten an apology. Because of this, I told Eve three years ago that I no longer wanted to be friends. We haven't spoken since. Fast forward to last Saturday. I was at the grocery store with my husband and we ran into her. I really didn't want to talk, but I said hello and introduced her to my husband. She looked really shocked and went silent for a minute. She then asked me multiple times if I was being serious about being married and I said that yes, I was actually married. I told her we got married last year right before everything shut down. She kind of mumbled a congratulations and then we then went our separate ways. Last night, she sent me a very long email about how upset she was that she never knew I was married, that she wasn't invited to the wedding, that she didn't get to help me pick out a dress, etc. We had talked about how we would be in each other's weddings and all that when we were friends. She was also offended at how I introduced her to my husband. I said, this is Eve, we went to college together. Maybe that was rude, but I didn't know what to call her and I didn't want to be like, this is my ex-best friend. So that's what I went with. She said that she cried all night after she got home because she couldn't believe that I would be so cruel. She also mentioned how pissed she was that she had to find out over a year later. I'm trying to understand her perspective, but at that point when I got married, it had been two years of absolutely no contact. I couldn't imagine just calling her up and being like, hey, I know we haven't spoken in years, but I'm getting married. Want to come help me plan it? Plus, she knew how badly she had hurt me. It has never tried to apologize or reconcile. I can kind of see why she's upset. We were friends for a long time, but we weren't friends now and haven't been for a while. I don't think I was in the wrong by not telling her, but I would love some outside opinions. Edit. I saw some comments asking if it was made clear to her that our friendship was over. Yes, I made it very clear three years ago that we were not friends anymore. Not the a-hole. Dude, why are you even entertaining this woman? She only steers up crap. I wouldn't even be giving her but a second thought. Block her and move on. Hell, if someone I parted in bad terms with and hadn't seen for two years invited me to their wedding, I would assume they were fishing for gifts and ignore it. Opie would be in the doghouse with her either way. I feel like former friend is in between a rock and a hard place. She misses Opie and wants her back as friend, but she also never wants to admit that she's done anything wrong and has no plans to make any amends. She may very well be hurt that she wasn't included in Opie's special day when she always thought she would be. But hurt feelings don't erase her horrible personality and selfishness. Not day hole. Opie, you're better off. Not day hole. I'd wager a guess she is jealous you managed quite well without her. And so instead of apologizing, she's turning it around to blame you for something. Ignore her. Still not your friend. And now she gets to be the victim, which is a much more comfortable role for her. Not day hole. If she's not remorseful about what she did, it's possible that to this day she doesn't understand how serious the falling out actually was. If she thinks that you've been overblowing it, and that somehow you're still two best friends amidst a long cold period, I could see why she'd be shocked that you have a husband without her knowing. She seems dense and inconsiderate, but I could understand why she's so stunned if she's really that ignorant. I think this sounds like the most likely answer. She thought they were still kind of friends or she would come around? Doesn't make OPD a-hole or anything. Edit. Thanks for everyone's feedback. I've decided I'm not going to respond. I just know it would end a drama and that's the last thing I want. I know people want to know what happened three years ago, but I'm really not comfortable talking about it. It's a very long story, and even though quite a bit of time has passed, it still upsets me to dwell on. It was over something very serious. I think I deserved an apology, but I'm never going to beg for someone to treat me the way I think I should be treated. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for saying no to donating money to my cousin's wedding? 
My fiance and I have been working odd jobs along with regular jobs to finance our wedding. Our wedding was set for this year, but we moved it to next year because of COVID. We weren't expecting things to get better and didn't want family to buy flights only to have it cancelled. My cousin got engaged with her fiancé towards the end of last year and then set their wedding to the day before ours. That's a whole other story. My cousin then called up all family members including my parents and myself to give her around $500, but more if we can afford it, to help them finance their wedding. I told her no because my fiancé and I are saving up as much as we can for our wedding next year. I wanted to say because I didn't want to ask family members to help pay for our wedding unless they offered but didn't want to insult her since I realized that's what she was doing at the moment. So I left that part out, but that's why I didn't end up donating. She then sounded angry and said it was fine, but has been telling family members about it and saying that we are being stingy, especially since our wedding is not this year anymore. My parents did agree to send $500 on their part though, so it's just my fiancé and I who said no. Am I the a-hole for saying no? I don't feel like I am, but I've gotten mixed answers from family and friends. Now for the comments. Let me guess. She still expects gifts from the guests, and of course they need to pay for their hotel rooms by themselves. Big fat not day hall. Not day hall. This is my thought as well. Don't give in advance, just give them a gift. Edit to add. Recommend suggesting to your parents they give the $500 with a card to make it clear this is their wedding slash engagement gift. Example, a gift from us in celebration of your engagement, wedding, and marriage. Alternatively, give them $500, but then start collections for your own wedding at $750. If they don't pony up, start bad-mouthing them to the whole family. How to turn tables. Honestly, the best revenge would it be to subject the rest of the family to a repeat performance, since Opie's making them sound not like accomplices, but like fellow victims. Instead, Opie could defend herself. It has come to our attention that Cousin has unfortunately been telling everyone that we have declined what we were told was an optional request to help pay for their wedding. That is our choice, but since we've been put in a position to defend it, a few things. One. We're saving up for a wedding of our own, one we don't feel comfortable soliciting others to pay for. Two, our wedding was planned first, but cousin didn't volunteer to help pay for it, so naturally we're surprised that we were expected to help pay for hers. Three, every article we can find on the subject emphasizes how tacky it is to ask for non-parent guests to pay for weddings. Then just Google something like, relative ask pay for wedding and go from there. If Opie wants revenge. What kind of selfish, entitled whiner even does something like that? Anyone who can't afford to pay for their own damn wedding shouldn't be having a wedding. You're not day hall, and everyone who actually gives them money's an idiot. Or a small wedding, even just at a courthouse slash whatever your local way is. Now for the last story. Am I the a hall for telling my manager it's not my problem if nobody can do my job? So some background is needed here. I'm 19 male and have worked at the leisure center in my town since I was 16. It has a gym, a pool, a function room slash hall, and a cafe. Up until recently, my job was cleaning the gym and hall and working in slash cleaning the cafe, but obviously it's been closed for a while and I've been on furlough. Thing is, my parents' house is very toxic and it reached a point where I had to get out, which I couldn't afford to do on furlough alone. I took on two new cleaning jobs to cover my living expenses. The leisure center opened again last week, all apart from the cafe part, and I realized just how much I'd be juggling now between work and uni. Since the two new jobs pay significantly better than this one, but I can use all the extra hours I can squeeze in, I elected to stop working in the cafe when it reopens because I think those hours will tip it over into too many territory. I told this to one of the two cafe managers and she said that's fine. So the issue. This morning, the other cafe manager messaged me about reopening and stuff, and asking if I'm okay to work the same hours I was before. I replied saying, sorry, I think there's been some missed communication. I told the other manager I won't be working the cafe anymore, as I've got two other jobs now and it's just too many hours. She was not happy. She began complaining to me that the cafe is short-staffed as is, and they don't have another cleaner on hand to do it. At one point in my life, I'd have folded and said I'd do it, 
but I'm trying to be better about advocating for myself. So I said, I'm sorry about the inconvenience, but I had my notice okayed and sorting a replacement isn't my problem. She then got upset and called me rude and insolent and said she's going to report me to the overall general manager of the place for my conduct. I'm really beginning to panic that I'm going to get into big trouble for this. And if I could have handled this better, I'm on the a-hall for what I said. Not the a-hall. Sounds like the manager is trying to scare you. You got the okay from the other manager. You did everything right. The manager is just mad that they have to do actual work to find a replacement. I do still work in the leisure center, just not the cafe part. Touch base with your current department manager, just to let them know that the old one is upset you can't do hours for them, but make it very clear you want the hours in the new roles. Why shouldn't you earn more per hour? This right here. Make sure whatever department head of the leisure center you do work for knows the situation. Not day hall. She's going to report you? Hilarious. Who to? The director of Hurt's feelings? Not day hall. Make sure you have proof that you gave your notice. I definitely do. I submitted it via email, so it's all there. 